Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, today's upload is going to be about the severe weather that will be occurring in the next couple of days. This will not be as nearly as severe as what occurred on uh, over the weekend and uh, on Saturday and Sunday across the south. Uh, at least it doesn't seem like that at this point. It's still fairly significant. There's an enhanced risk. Fairly wide area, so we'll have to watch that. Uh, watch out for that. Um, but uh, before we dive further into this, if you'd like to support this channel, if you like th these videos to keep coming, you could do so by uh, subscribing, hitting that red subscribe button, helps my channel grow, and it uh, gets this video, beat these videos out to more people. Um, also, if you want, if you really want to, you could become a Patreon. Um, I've been super blessed by you guys. You've been, uh, I have 13 patrons right now, and I'm really happy about that. So, if you want to continue supporting that, consider doing that. If uh, I mean, uh, if you want to like the video, you could all do, also do that and leave a nice comment. So, we're looking right now at the GFS, and I just want to sh quickly show you the GFS, what it's talking about. So, this main, this whole thing right here is this storm right here in the west. It's located in Colorado as of now. Uh, it's bringing some snow, some rain to the west. Uh, nothing severe yet. There's going to be a band of showers tomorrow that erupts across the north, even some steadier showers. But this low on the back side of it, kind of like the dry line, uh, the cold front. Uh, <clears throat> shows up quite a bit, uh, <clears throat> shows up with uh, quite a bit of precip, and there could even be a, uh, you know, couple of tornadoes, not out of the question, some hail, and this is where, again, this is where it would be occurring late, it went yesterday, oh, sorry, <laughs> late Wednesday into uh, Thursday will be the highest risk, and then maybe a little bit again Thursday evening with a re uh, reenactment, I guess, with the daytime heating with the thunderstorms across Kentucky, Mississippi, and Alabama. Uh, that could again turn pretty deadly. We could see another uh, active potential outbreak on Friday. So, you know, several day event for sure, and quite a bit of rain. If we look at the rain total accumulations, we are looking at let's go to total accumulated precipitation. You know, for thunderstorms, this is fairly high because during the summer they're very scattered, so the models usually have a tough time pointing this out. But very heavy rainfall amounts with these thunderstorms. Let's go quickly to the uh, storm prediction center. This is basically showing us, you know, where uh, where uh, the, the, the s most severe thunderstorms will occur, and uh, what uh, not necessarily where, it just shows us uh, what will be occurring. So t let's just go to tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday. This is um, recording this as of Tuesday. We, this will be uploaded at Wednesday. You can see then the area of enhancers is Oklahoma and Texas. That's mainly it. Maybe a little bit of the Panhandle of Texas, <clears throat> parts of Kansas and Arkansas. As we uh, look at the area populations, I mean, look at that. There's some qu uh, some quite a bit of you know quite a bit of people in these uh, these colors. The big cities: Dallas, San Antonio, Houston, Memphis, Kansas City. Shreveport, Corpus Christi, St. Louis, so definitely some um, some big uh, cities with this. So it doesn't seem, you know, incredibly too high, but, uh, you know, it, def it doesn't have to be incredibly too high to be deadly. Let's go to Thursday, uh, if this could load. This is, uh, this is Thursday, so you can see it moves along, and it doesn't necessarily move up into the north, uh, it just stays confined to the south, but still enhanced across Louisiana and Mississippi, the slight across Tennessee, and I think, and remember that thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms could occur anywhere in this green, um, even in, uh, even in just the uh, marginal area. Uh, I would even argue that in the in the uh, this light thunderstorm area, I, it's definitely some severe thunderstorms could occur with uh, those with those thunderstorms. And uh, let's look quickly. I wanted to show you the. Uh, this is like a thing that I've used several times before. Already, it's called the of the page. Uh, it's like the, they call it the next generation weather lab, and it's actually pretty cool. So I think I'll be using this instead of pivotal weather because pivotal weather is kind of clunky, kind of hard to use. I just don't like it. But uh, I really like in College of DuPage. We'll just. I want to show you this. Um, so. This is a significant tornado, so basically uh, it shows us the, the, the likelihood of a tornado and the wind knots. You can see this is measuring wind knots, so like uh, basically the, where you see the colored areas, that's where the highest chance of like a tornado is. And we see, uh, anywhere you see in the red, like the three to four, 
to four to five, that's already pretty significant. Uh, that's you know that's definitely a, uh, a alarming thing. So for now, nothing. Then we look into right there. It starts erupting. That's tomorrow again. That's why the enhanced risk is across Oklahoma and Texas. Then we keep going further forward. You could see that. That's come on. That is actually that's almost ten right there. I don't know, you know, this is still very localized, but 11 knots, that's just absolutely ridiculous for, uh, you know, for in terms of the possibilities of a tornado. You can see that it moves down to the south, that's why the enhance is in Louisiana, and this moves up the east coast, which doesn't bring much, but there's definitely going to be some scattered locations of, uh, you know, knots you know, over two, three knots, which is still, uh, you know, significant and plenty enough to produce a tornado, but right there, that that's, that, you know, that's concerning. Let's go to um, supercell composite. So this basically shows us again uh, boil. It's a lot, you know, it's more complicated. But what it boils down to is the likelihood. The higher colors, the more areas. Um, the, the higher colors in the area that's colored, it will be the higher chance of a supercell. And you can see this one's obviously much more broad because supercells don't necessarily have to have tornadoes. They could have wind. They could have large hail, and all of that seems possible with this. So you can see. This is um, this is Wednesday evening. Oh, I just moved out. This is Wednesday midday. Now it's Wednesday evening. You can see some uh, again a knots a speed of 62 knots direction 190 degrees, and uh, we see uh, you know the storm. I think it's just like the measurement is at three over here, four. So definitely uh, you know substantial enough to produce these supercells. And again, notice how it moves down to the south here and stays confined to the south. Not much across Kentucky and Tennessee, but then it reamps itself across the Carolinas. So there could be another outbreak potentially across the Carolinas, um, which would be very concerning. But it seems like the most widespread area will be uh, tomorrow across much of the Midwest and uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Illinois, and Iowa area. If we were to quickly look at uh, their, I wanted to show you guys something. I'll just go to the, because I'm new with this website. No, let's go here. Uh, this is the cap, so uh, not cape, it's pronounced cap. And this basically shows you uh, the convective available potential energy in the atmosphere. Obviously, the more energy, the more instability, the more th the thunderstorms have to tap into. It's a direct relationship. The more, th the more cap uh, the more uh, thunderstorm probability you could see some in here getting up to uh, that's 3,000 joules of per kilogram of energy that's you know that's definitely enough to produce anything above I would say 2,500 is rather significant you could see up there further not that much 600 700 but once you get into the Oklahoma Texas area where the enhanced risk will be issued that's where we could start seeing some fairly significant issues and uh, it does wind down Know, significantly across the, uh, the, the Florida Panhandle and South Carolina, even though uh, it's still, you know, potentially damaging. I mean, look at that. 2,500 is still plenty. Let's quickly, I, want, I don't see it here on this. Mm, wait, uh, I wanted to show you the lapse rates. Let's go to the lapse rates. This basically uh, shows us the, the, the wind speeds in terms of uh, mid-level wind speeds and uh, how basically how quick quick they are what their wind speed is in, in the vertical direction the updraft obviously the higher they are the higher the instability and that will increase the uh, the chances for a severe thunderstorm or tornado so you could see uh, nine a lot of reds and eight and nines uh, quite in the rating of I think this is Celsius um, so we could see uh, the latch rate Celsius kilometers and we see that uh, there's gonna be quite a uh, expansive area of uh, that of that uh, of those lapse rates, which would potentially you know, in, in, induce those uh, those uh, tornadoes and severe thunderstorms. So I just wanted to make this quick video, guys, uh, show you this. And one more thing I wanted to quickly show you is just the temperatures. The temperatures will be fairly warm, a bit above average for this time of the year. Let's go to the HER model. Let's go to two meter temperature shaded. And I want to show you this. If we look at this, uh, you can see um, definitely just warm temperatures I mean you can see mo most of the country not most but most of the e southeastern part of the country is in the 80s and 70s and 60s so fairly significant and as we move on we see uh, we see uh, it cooling down but uh, it's still you know it's definitely gonna be warm enough for these severe thunderstorms to do their uh, thing with quickly 
building and then quickly falling. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. Consider becoming a patron. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See y'all. Bye.